Hey guys, this is Justin. Hello and welcome to another video. Now, I wanted to spend some time today talking about the character of Sabine. As you may or may not know, I really enjoy Star Wars Rebels, so I'm partial to all the characters. Although I will admit, Sabine, probably my least favorite of the Phoenix Squadron. However, I've really enjoyed her character development in Ahsoka. One really interesting element of this recent episode was the reveal that she's basically lost all of her family, which... I mean, in hindsight, makes sense. They were Mandalorians. We know Mandalore was decimated by the Empire, but I didn't really consider it, and it makes her, I don't want to call it obsession, but strong desire to find Ezra, it makes even more sense. But another element of the show that I'm kind of surprisingly enjoying is her evolution as apprentice to Ahsoka. Now, this was certainly a controversial issue going into the season when we had all that marketing showing her with a lights saber her apprentice to Ahsoka, but they got ahead of that pretty quickly by saying, hey, when it comes to force sensitivity, you didn't miss it in Star Wars Rebels. Sabine is basically as low as it can go. She wouldn't have qualified to be a Jedi. She can't even really move a cup. And in the first episode, we see what happens when she battles Shin and tries to play Jedi. But the point that I've seen sort of related to that is, well, why is Ahsoka training her to be a Jedi? Sabine is a perfectly capable Mandalorian. Why is she trying to change that. And I think the whole point of the first two episodes is that you can't change that. You can't force yourself to be a Jedi if you're not a Jedi. There's a shot after Sabine is attacked by the droids in episode one where she leans under the table to get a weapon and her Mandalorian armor is right there. Instead, she picks up Ezra's lightsaber and she ends up getting her ass whooped by Shin nearly dying. It's at that point that she has in the next episode the heart to heart with Hu Yang, and he basically gives it to her real. He says, hey, you're probably not going to cut it as a Jedi, or at least you wouldn't have, but that doesn't mean you need to stop trying. And I think a lot of people missed how her relationship to Ahsoka as a master changed after that point. Yes, Sabine is still trying to learn to potentially use the Force, and maybe someday she will be able to move that cup a little bit, but that's not why Ahsoka's there. There. Ahsoka isn't trying to make Sabine a Jedi. I think that relationship has probably evolved. We know that their past time spent as Master and Apprentice before the series was difficult, and that was probably due to the mismanaged expectations of both parties. Ahsoka would probably train Sabine as a Jedi, despite her not having the full potential of one. Now I think the difference is, she's not training her as a Jedi, rather she's using Jedi techniques and Jedi training principles principles, and even Jedi ethics to make Sabine a better warrior. Evidence of this, I think, is everywhere, including, most recently, in Episode 4. Sabine doesn't make the same mistake this time. Not only does she actually take her Mandalorian armor when going to fight on Cetos, and by the way, her Beskar tanks a few laser bolts, but when it comes to that almost final moment with Shin, she doesn't rely on the Force. She doesn't force herself into a role that she's just not capable of filling. Rather, she uses uses her rockets on her gauntlet, and she gains the upper hand by being pragmatic. Star Wars has never been about making yourself into something you're not. It's about trying to achieve the best version of yourself, and for Sabine, that means reconciling her warrior ways with some of Ahsoka's teachings. But why is that even important? Like, why should Sabine even bother learning? Couldn't she just learn from other Mandalorians? Well, I think there's a broader point, and sort of a message that Star Wars has told for a long time. The Force connects everybody. Yoda said that, and in a way, we hear that in Episode 8. When Luke is talking about the Jedi, he mentions that they don't have divine right to the light side of the Force. They're just one cult among sort of many that have existed in the galaxy. We'll come back to the topic of the Force, but I mean, there are also lessons in the Jedi Code that Sabine could stand to benefit from. One of the main lessons in Star Wars is to avoid unhealthy attachments. Arguably, the Jedi went a little too far, and there's a way to avoid attachment without totally avoiding love, but attachment can lead to obsession, can lead to fear of loss, can lead to, well, before you know it, you're killing a bunch of children, and your lungs don't work so well anymore. This message about attachment, this Jedi message, this traditionally Jedi message, is one that Sabine desperately needed to hear, but which she didn't learn in time. Episode 4 of Ahsoka 
ends with Sabine making the wrong decision. I mean, from an entertainment standpoint, it's the one we all want her to make. We want to visit that new galaxy. We want to see Thrawn, but it wasn't the right decision. And it's not the decision that Ezra would have wanted her to make. Ezra at the end of Star Wars Rebels Season 4 is more than ready to sacrifice himself to remove Thrawn's danger from the galaxy. Now, Sabine has not only undone that sacrifice, but potentially connected Thrawn with even more dangerous allies and a way to return to an unsuspecting galaxy. That was not a great move to make, and had Sabine spent more time training with Ahsoka and focusing on some of those values, which, again, it's not just the light side of the Force. These are the values that Star Wars is saying is important to all of us, then she might have been better prepared to make that decision and to make her own sacrifice in accepting the possibility that she might never see her friend again. But I mean, there clearly are other benefits to training with Ahsoka as well. She's always been adept with swords. We saw her with the Darksaber in Star Wars Rebels. She seems to be pretty damn good with the lightsaber for a not really force sensitive individual. So that training is going to keep her uniquely dangerous. And I think given her role right now and what Ahsoka probably sees for her, that's a good thing. And when it comes to the force, Star Wars has generally, since the Empire Strikes Back, democratized the force. Sure, in A New Hope, in the original Star Wars, the force is wizard magic that Luke and Obi-Wan have. However, in episode five, the sequel, we learn from Yoda that the force resides in all living things. George Lucas's original idea was actually that really anyone could touch the force. It's just that the Jedi were the ones who dedicated themselves to learning its art. In that way, he compared it to more like Tai Chi or martial arts or even yoga. Now, obviously that's changed pretty significantly since then. But again, in episode eight, one of the elements of that movie that I kind of liked was how they touched on that idea, how the principles of the force and the light side can be useful to more than just Jedi. And maybe in being in touch with oneself, one can be a better fighter as well. I mean, Rogue One would certainly suggest that. Chirrut Imwe, not a Jedi, but he could do a lot of damage even without vision. Anyway, I really like this direction. It's very surprising for Sabine's character. I was worried going into the series that they would simply label her as force sensitive and leave it at that, but I think they've been doing a great job with what is a pretty nuanced topic. And I find it interesting how the title of episode four, Fallen Jedi, can in a way refer to four or five different individuals. I mean, certainly Balin and Shin, perhaps Marok, but in a way, also Ahsoka. Sabine has now failed her Jedi training. And of course, that guy at the end, Anakin, he definitely fell as a Jedi too. Anyway, that's my thoughts on Ahsoka episode four. Hope you guys checked out my review video from yesterday. I'll link to that on screen right now in case you're interested. Until next time, be safe, have a good one, and may the force be with you.